And thank you for joining me here. I'm Don Ma. U.S. stocks closed higher on Monday and regaining some ground lost last week. Investors added positions ahead of Thursday's highly awaited U.S. inflation report. S&P 500 gained 40 points or 0.9 percent. NASDAQ gained 84 points or 0.6 percent. The Dow rose 407 points or 1.1 percent. The tech-heavy Nasdaq snapped a four-session losing streak, and the same goes for S&P 500. Overall, second-quarter earnings have been better than expected. So far, with 80% of the S&P 500 companies that have reported as of Friday beating analyst estimates. This is according to Refinitiv Data. And the once-dominant trucking giant Yellow has filed for bankruptcy. The 99-year-old company announced Sunday has filed for Chapter 11 relief. The filing comes more than a week after the Nashville-based logistics provider shut down operations, putting 30,000 people out of work. Yellow said it expects to reach an agreement with creditors that will allow it to pay certain wages and benefits and some obligations to vendors and suppliers. The bankruptcy filing comes despite the fact that Yellow received a $700 million federal COVID-19 relief loan during the pandemic. Any deal would have to have court approval. And Taylor Swift's record-breaking eras tour is coming to an end in the U.S. for now. The widely successful tour could gross over a billion dollars when it's done. It has also been a major boost to local economies. Here are the details. Welcome to the Eras Tour. It's the words millions, including Julie Barfus, were waiting to hear. And it was a dream come true. I'm trying to stick these crystals on. But nine months ago, she thought those dreams had been crushed. I, to... I was crying. I was really upset, like, you know, because it was just so long. And every time you'd get in, you'd get kicked out or get an error or something would go wrong. And it was just like nonstop drama. Despite multiple tries, she wasn't able to get her tickets through Ticketmaster. She eventually bought them from another fan. Two tickets for $600 then $100 on parking, almost $400 on gas. She drove from Salt Lake City to Santa Clara, California, about $700 on a hotel, Ta -da. more than $300 on meals, Got matching. and $200 on her outfit and makeup. The multiplier effect is just enormous, and it's a new phenomenon. It's, it's, not, it's not even compared Super Bowl doesn't compare to this. Sanjay Sharma, professor of finance at the University of Southern California, has been studying and estimating the Taylor Swift numbers. He says he could see the Eras tour being what he called a $5 billion GDP type tour. So that includes ticket sales, that includes hotels, that includes all of the small shopkeepers. He says quantifying it is hard, but points out that the money stays in the U.S boosting local economies. And it's happening from California to Massachusetts, Pennsylvania to the Plains. We kind of think this is the, the quintessential welcome. The U.S. and soon the world benefiting from the Taylor Swift economic. And it's the Swifties, the faithful fans, who often don't hesitate to spend. Do you want a trade bracelet? For Julie, it's not about the money, and it's not just the tour. This one is has the date, Eras Tour. She's embarked on a long-term mission against Ticketmaster and has sued over her experience when purchasing tickets. That will entail more money on travel, hotels, meals, money she says is worth it. <laughs> And Tyson Foods said on Monday it's closing four more U.S. chicken plants in its latest efforts to cut costs. The meat company has grappled with declining profits and struggled to improve results in its chicken business. Tyson said it would move the work performed in the plants to newer facilities that are closer to its customers. But it declined to say how many employees were affected. The closing facilities are located in North Little Rock, Arkansas, Cordon, Indiana, Dexter, Missouri, and Noel, Missouri. Meanwhile, a major breakthrough in nuclear fusion. The U.S. has achieved a net energy gain in fusion reaction for a second time and taking a key step toward a future of unlimited energy. Here's more. 
U.S. scientists have repeated what appears to be an energy breakthrough, a nuclear fusion reaction that gave off more energy than went into it for a second time after months of near misses. Fusion is a reaction that takes place in the sun and is hoped replicating that could one day lead to a source of near limitless and clean energy. Scientists at the California-based Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory say they repeated the feat in an experiment in late July, after they achieved it first in December using lasers. But this time, a lab spokesperson said the scientists were able to produce an even higher energy yield, but that final results are still being analyzed. The experiment is trying to replicate fusion through so-called nuclear ignition. It involves focusing a laser on a target fuel to fuse two lighter atoms, such as hydrogen, to form heavier elements and in the process release a burst of energy. The December trial generated around 3 megajoules of energy output after the laser delivered a little over 2 megajoules to the target. The U.S. Energy Department called it a major scientific breakthrough decades in the making. While experts outside the lab have applauded the advancements since December, they told Reuters much more work is needed to make fusion power commercially viable. Pfizer's partner on COVID-19 vaccines, Germany's BioNTech, cut its drug development budget for this year. And this is after quarterly revenues were hurt by a plunge in demand. The quarterly net loss was 190 million euros. The company said it's cutting its projected research and development budget for this year. BioNTech forecasted its outlook for COVID-19 vaccine revenues to reach about 5 billion euros in 2023. Now, to put that into perspective, it's sharply down from 17 billion euros last year. The company said it plans to start deliveries of updated shots targeting the XBB 1.5 Omicron subvariant with partner Pfizer from September. And, of course, this is provided they can win regulatory approval. And Tesla's CFO is stepping down. Here are the details. Tesla announced that its chief financial officer, Zachary Kirkhorn, once thought to be a possible successor to CEO Elon Musk, is leaving the company. The electric vehicle maker did not specify a reason, but in a LinkedIn post on Monday, Kirkhorn wrote, quote, this morning, Tesla announced that I've stepped down from my role as chief financial officer, succeeded by our chief accounting officer, Vebhav Taneja. Being a part of this company is a special experience, and I'm extremely proud of the work we've done together since I joined over 13 years ago. He also thanked Musk for his, quote, leadership and optimism. Kirkhorn did not immediately respond to queries when contacted on LinkedIn. During his tenure, Tesla posted its first quarterly profit after it launched the mass market Model 3 compact sedan and hit a market valuation of more than $1 trillion. The Wall Street Journal reported earlier this year that Kirkhorn was being considered as a candidate to replace Musk amid growing investor concern about the lack of a clear succession plan. He will remain with the company through the end of the year to help with a smooth transition. Replacing Kirkhorn in the CFO role, dubbed Master of Coin by the company, is Vebhav Taneja, who will also retain his current job as Chief Accounting Officer. Tesla this year has cut prices on its vehicles in an effort to prioritize sales growth and market share, squeezing its industry-leading margins. It's hinted at more price cuts to come in what Musk called turbulent times as rising borrowing costs take a toll on the sales of electric vehicle makers. Meanwhile, Zoom, which is a company that makes working from home possible, is asking its employees to return to the office. Zoom says its new hybrid approach applies to people who live near one of its workplaces. It says the structure is more effective for the company. Zoom added that it will continue to use its own platform for remote days. The announcement follows similar ones from Google, Amazon, and Salesforce, despite pushback from employees. It comes as Zoom faces waning demand that caused it to cut about 15% of its staff this year. And it was a historic weekend for the film industry, with this summer's two blockbuster films rewriting Hollywood history books. But the movies about a legendary doll and a biographic about a Manhattan Project scientist got a little boost from the oppressive heat blanketing much of the country over the past few weeks. Here's a look. Mattel, Inc., may want to create a new action figure called Billionaire Barbie. It is 
is the best day ever, and so is yesterday, and so is tomorrow, and every day from now until forever. Three weeks after its debut, Barbie has brought in more than a billion dollars worldwide, according to Warner Brothers, which is owned by CNN's parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery. It's got a nostalgia play. Everyone remembers playing with Barbies. It's got smart marketing, and it's got good content. The other film that's been likewise earning a pretty penny over the past few weeks, Oppenheimer. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. On the same day Barbie passed the 10-digit mark in sales, Oppenheimer collected more than $500 million and became the biggest grossing film that takes place during World War II, according to official estimates from Universal Pictures. While plots and actors undoubtedly helped get people to see these films, the major heat wave is also helping. Box office sales so far this year are already $1 billion above 2022 sales through the same time frame, according to Sean Robbins, the chief analyst with Box Office Pro, who also said, quote, as we get into July and August, the dog days of summer, the heat can be a determining factor at the box office. And the possible cage fight between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg might be streamed on X, formerly known as Twitter. That's according to Elon Musk, who posted on social media that he was, quote, lifting weights throughout the day, preparing for the fight. Musk added that, quote, all proceeds will go to charity for veterans. The two big tech billionaires seemingly agreed to participate in a fight last June. However, neither Musk nor Zuckerberg has confirmed whether an agreement has been reached on the fight. And now listen up for anyone who has a phone. In the fall, every consumer cell phone will be part of a nationwide emergency alert test. FEMA and the FCC have scheduled the drill for October 4th at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Time. You can expect your cell phone to receive an alert that reads, quote, This is a test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. No action is needed. The test message may pop up in Spanish depending on your settings. FEMA and the FCC say they're coordinating with wireless providers, emergency managers, and others to avoid confusion. The reason for the test is to make sure all systems are prepared in case a national emergency needs to be sent out to the public. It will be the second time that all cellular devices are tested. And AI technology continues to become more common in our daily lives. The Tokyo train station is now using it to shatter the language barrier. Let's take a look. Tokyo is the most populous city in the world and a sought-after travel destination. Recently, the Seibu Shinjuku train station rolled out an AI program. It translates speech into 11 different languages, including English, Mandarin, French, and of course, Japanese. The display we have introduced can automatically translate between Japanese and other languages. When customers speak in a foreign language, the station attendant can see it in Japanese. And when the station attendant speaks Japanese, customers can read the sentences in their own language. The program helps with directions, tourist information, and assistance with train tickets. So far, travelers have found the clear display both convenient and useful. Google Translate isn't always available because you don't always have Wi-Fi everywhere you go. So places like this, it's also much faster than pulling up your phone, typing everything out, sort of showing it and there's misunderstanding. Having it like this, clear on the screen, it's, uh, it's really nice. The railway chose this station for its trial run since it serves over 100,000 people daily and is one of Tokyo's most confusing hubs. The program is undergoing a three-month test before being placed at other stations. And while some opponents of AI oppose the lack of human interaction, this hybrid of both human and AI may negate that concern. It might sound a bit weird, but like you feel safe immediately because you know there is a human on the other side. So you take your time to explain what you need and you will know that they will understand what you need. AI technology has recently become a hotly debated topic. However, here in Tokyo, travelers find its application to be something both timely and useful. And just a quick announcement before we get to our final story. I'll be taking a day off tomorrow, so there won't be a show on Tuesday, August the 8th. I'll be back on Wednesday, August the 9th. Now, will the development of artificial intelligence be beneficial or a threat to society? Here's a deep dive into that question. Will artificial intelligence be a blessing or a curse? History may be able to offer us a few clues. A certain amount of fear is is justified. I don't think we're facing the robot apocalypse, the Terminator scenario. Take the medieval plough. 
If advances in the tool didn't lift Europe's peasants out of poverty, it was largely because their rulers took the wealth generated by the new gains in output and used it to build cathedrals instead. Economists say something similar could happen with artificial intelligence if it enters our lives in such a way that the benefits are enjoyed by the few, not the many. AI definitely has the potential to uh, increase inequality. Simon Johnson is a professor of global economics and management at MIT Sloan School of Management. It may benefit other people also, but that could also take a really long time. So a lot of times technological transformations eventually do help a lot of people, but eventually might be 100 years or even, even more. Uh, so I think the question with AI is how quickly can you share the benefits? Backers of AI predict a productivity leap that will generate wealth and improve living standards. Consultancy McKinsey estimates that it could add between $14 trillion and $22 trillion of value annually. That higher figure being roughly the current size of the US economy. Some techno-optimists go further, suggesting that, along with robots, AI is the technology that will finally free humanity from humdrum tasks and launch us into lives of more creativity and leisure. Based on the technology of autonomy. Yet worries abound about its impact on livelihoods, including its potential to destroy jobs in all kinds of sectors. Witness the strike by Hollywood actors who fear being made redundant by their AI-generated doubles. 31-year-old Bell works in property. I guess the people who've created it are worried about what they've created. Such concerns are not unfounded. Innovation, it turns out, is the easy bit. Harder is making it work for everyone. History shows the economic impact of technological advances is generally uncertain, unequal, and sometimes outright malign. The track record of the internet, for example, is complex. It has created many new job roles, even as much of the wealth generated has gone to a handful of billionaires. But the productivity gains it was once lauded for have slowed down across many economies. So AI is, is up there in terms of potential impact, but it's also really fast. Right? It's coming at us much faster than electricity did. For example, that was a big deal in the early 20th century, but that took about 20 or 30 years to roll out fully. AI already, I mean, within a few days, ChatGPT was affecting jobs ar around the world. And I think within five years, the effects are gonna be quite profound in many places.